Hey folks and welcome to this brand new video. In the last episode, I showed you how you can write simple unit tests for your .NET or .NET Core application. And in today's episode, we're gonna write some mocks for services that we don't want to be uh, using our tests. So imagine if you're using a database or an external service and you want to test or write a test for your unit, uh, your method, you don't want to be have any external dependencies that you have to cover. Uh, those dependencies usually get covered in another kind of test. They are called integration tests, but particularly in unit tests, you only want to check and test if the method does what it's supposed to be and not if a database is available, if a third party service is available, that's not what we want. So uh, for the beginning, I just want to write a new test. So let's hop over here in our Visual Studio. I am just for some um, structural things, I just call here a new, or create a new folder, which is called service. And then I will create a new item, um, which is an interface, right? So it's very important to keep in mind, if you want to mock things, you only have two options. It's either to be an interface or the methods have to be virtual. Otherwise, you can't uh, mock those specific methods and, and services. All right, so I just want to call it here, I external service. Yeah, make sure that those things are public. And let's say we do get here a white to something. And then we get a string return something so that we can see how we can set up those two specific methods in the in the mocking. Yeah, sure, name can be simplified, but I'm not gonna do that right now. All right, so that is our interface, and now we're gonna make a specific implementation about the interface, right? Let's just call it um, the external service.cs. That's not an interface, that's a class, that was my mistake which is implementing the uh, external service interface. And we got two methods right here. Yeah, just um, create that. So do something. And just right now, we can leave it that way pretty much because you have to imagine right here, we would call an external service. We don't get anything returned. So let's just say probably a post request. I know post, usually you get returned the newly created resource, but for the sake of this video and that you better understand it, just leave it that way. Probably a get request. All right, guys. Now, before we continue with this video, I just want to make a quick shout out to our day sponsor. Um, as you guys know, without a sponsor, those videos wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much for Skillshare to our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning platform. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a month free trial of Skillshare. I personally love the fact that with one subscription, you get so many different high quality videos from all different fields out there. You can learn about coding, filmmaking, marketing, animation, UI, UX design, and so on. So there is limitless possibilities. One of my favorite things is software development, as you guys probably know, is clean code and guess what? On Skillshare is a lovely course from Christian Hallman, senior developer at Microsoft from Berlin, about the JavaScript toolkit write cleaner, faster, and better code. I highly respect Christian and can recommend his class without any doubt. You will just learn how to write elegant, clean, and better code in the future. If you're completely new in the world of software development, and clean code is just a phrase which confuses you, don't worry more. There are plenty of beginner courses on Skillshare as well. So it doesn't matter if you are a beginner, intermediate or expert developer or in your specific field, you can always and will always learn more on Skillshare, I guarantee you that. What have you done? Skillshare and I partnered up so that the first 1000 users who uses my link in the description to sign up, get a free membership trial of Skillshare Premium. And now let's get back into the regular video. Now we are back in the video and we just create our external service, which we are creating here. Let's not necess unnecessarily throw an, an exception right there. So we just do something. It's a console application. So 
So we just write something in the console um, to something, right? So imagine that there are our external services, which are called right there. So now we don't want to write tests for the external service itself. The external service is just the thing that we want to mock away. So let's just call the external service and then just made an implementation or just let's just call it service. My service. I know the naming is not the best, but I mean, who cares? So, and eventually we're gonna test this um, my method, right? And eventually, not an existing item that was too fast. We're gonna create a new item, which is a class. Um, let's call it my service, which implements the I my service interface. This will be the, the tests, uh, the class and the method we will eventually be unit testing. So in the first case, we want to uh, have an constructor because we need the reference to our external service, right? So usually in a real world application, you would have some kind of dependency container and the service will be injected. But it's probably the same if you do it wire constructor all of your own so it doesn't really matter and now we are setting the Excel service all right so now we have injected our external service and my method just calls the external service to do something right so let's hop back into our do something which is just a calling and then we got to return something so uh, let's get back into my service. So let's rename this here real quick. Uh, we got my method, which is doing the to something. And then it's calling the external service return something, right? Perfect. And that here is our var result. Perfect. Now, just to make uh, it a little bit uh, better, let's just amend these my service and uh, let's just return here the result so that we can even better uh, test this this part. So my service is now completed. It's very minimal, but it uses the external services and it calls both both methods in our unit test. I would highly suggest that you create a test file for each class. So let's hop in right there and hop over to the create part, the new item. I tend to call my uh, test classes the name of the class and then test, right? So we got our public my service test. As you guys know, I am using XUnit, so it's already installed, and we just want to test uh, my method, right? So. Let's just make a fact, all right? And let's just call it public white test. So, and should return to something result, right? That is um, the thing that is gonna be returned in our case. So, for the, for the part that we are gonna create an external service or a mocking, we just have to use the mock framework of choice. Mine is mock with, with a Q, mock4 is the current version. And it's probably one of the most used for uh, .NET. I highly suggest using this version because it's, it's simple, it's readable, it's got a fluent API, so it's very, very easy to use, you see it's pretty old. Uh, there are some check-ins from 13 years ago. Um, it's widely used. Um, yeah, so that's my, my mocking framework choice. But there are also different frameworks for, for mocking out there. In the end, it doesn't really matter what kind of using. The only thing that matters is that you are using some kind of mocking. Let's just check if mock is installed. I don't think so at this point. Uh, let's hop over to our NuGet packages. You also can do this We are uh, the command line no problem and let's 
just search for mock. As you can see here, 228 million downloads, so quite a lot. And let's just install it here in our test project because mocking is only needed in our test project, of course. Uh, it doesn't belong to uh, the, the original source code, so we're just using this for our tests. All right, now, uh, what we're we gonna do here? At first, we're gonna create a mock for our external service, right? And I just want, or I just like to call the mocks with a mock. And the second part is our actual class that we want to test, so it's my service. All right, now we just need a constructor. And at first we're gonna create the new mock. And that's all we have to do in the first part. So what's happening right there? is the external service mock got initiated. And if we now create a new my service instance, we can simply pass the external service mock and the object. The object is eventually our I external service mock. Yeah, as you can see right there, it exposes the mock object instance. And well, now we can just call my service, my method and we're expecting a result, right? And as you guys know, we, sh we should have, yeah, we do have um, Fluent version also installed. So right now we can just write result should be, just be to, let's just call it my test result. All right, right now, if we run this unit test, it will fail because we just initiated the mock, but we didn't set it up correctly right now. So if you just hop over to our test explorer, we see that this unit test is failing because the return value is null, right? If you guys remember, if you hop over to my service, we see that the do something is called, that is fine. Um, that's nothing to do with because uh, we don't use any return values or check if the method was called. But the return something should return the value which is asserted in our test. Now, uh, the default uh, setup for mocking is a loose configuration. That just means that all methods are kind of initiated and return null. So uh, otherwise you will get an error but the mock framework makes sure that uh, if you just run uh, code like this, it doesn't throw an error or exception. It just returns null. At first, we can make a setup and check if the do something is called. For this particular part, we have to uh, use the mock, which is our external service mock. And there is a setup method, right? And now we can um, initiate or set up, yeah, it's basically the better, better wording, we can set up the do something method, right? And yeah, basically that's it. If you just have a method which is called, it's that. Now you also can make a verifiable, uh, a verifiable part. And what that does is it allows you to verify the mock. Now, there are two ways of doing this. The first way is you can uh, call the verifiable method on the mock setup and you make sure by verify that all verifiable expectations have been met, right? So these, this method and this line just checks if the do method, uh, method is called, right? There is another part and that is verify all. It just checks all setup methods regardless of the verifiable flag. So Usually I just go with the verifiable all and it checks all of my setups, right? So now the more interesting part, we just create a new setup and now for the return something. And actually what we can do right now is we can uh, set a return value. And in my case, it's my test result. 
So right now, if the return something is called, we return or the mock actually returns my test result, right? So if we now run the unit test right there, it should be green. <laughs> As expected, the test it turns out to be green, right? So you can do some crazy things right here. What you can do probably, um, if you just make it verifiable, that's uh, one other thing, how you can be more precisely. If you go into the external mock service, verify, you can verify uh, if all setups that have the verifiable flag are met, but you can specify, right? Uh, yeah, now with the verify, you can also uh, check how many times the method has been called at least once, or at least, and you can provide a number. And we just wanna make sure that this part is called times once. So if you now rerun our test, it should be green and if you change uh, this times to let's say never we just want that this part is never called now the test should fail and it should say it's called once yeah but it was once times so um, there are many many ways that you can specify or even more uh, make it narrow do our tests to be to make sure that the tests are doing exactly what you're wanting from them to be. So guys, that was a very quick and brief overview about mocking, mocking frameworks. Um, as I said, it's very important to have an interface that you can just swap in your test with a mock. It's also possible um, if you have virtual methods, those can also be override, but it's much, 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 much easier to use an interface because those are fully, fully overridable and compatible with unit testing and mocking. So guys, if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.